go. We're live, live to the you know, two viewers. Um. Oh damn, they're closed. So. But I can pick it up tomorrow. It's okay. You can pick it up tomorrow. Last we left off, you've all arrived at Alderheart, Humblewood's capital city. You parted ways with Eliza Pennygleam and made your way into the Roots district of Underfall. Rollo, in need of, to see some business done, uh, split off from the party, promising to find the rest of you in time. The rest of you went to search for a place to rest and get some shut-eye. Um, walking the dimly lit tunnels, you've encountered Magnus, Pavo's uh, younger brother, who helped you find a place where you could buy room and board. Uh, the place was called the Blushing Tankard. It's a tavern in the slums district. Venturing inside, you made acquaintance with Edmund Kegg, a Vulpin bartender uh, and the Blushing Tankard's innkeeper. There you spent the night drinking in revelry as you face off Captain Duncan Chore and his crew of bat seeds in a drinking competition, winning a handful of gold pieces, which Trent, I think I sent you to, I did a little fix because I miscalculated the amount of gold you won. Yes. Yeah, I gave you that extra gold there. Uh, you won a handful of gold pieces as well as a drinking token, which is pretty much a one-time free drinks all night, all services paid for kind of token as well as your name on the Wall of Glory. The next morning, having nursed your hangovers, Nevitz, you realize that you have been robbed the night before, your diamond missing, stolen. Uh, you took to the streets, searching, taking the spiral stairway up to the bright hollows above in the market district there uh, within Alderheart's trunk. You found the culprits, three Jerbeen children orphaned and living the life of thieves um, in order to survive and avoid starvation. You learned their names, Flick, Jep, and Kiri, and with kindled understanding and dash of uh, philanthropism, you convinced the children to return that which they have stolen. You left them with some food, a bit of gold, uh, before making your way up to the trunk market toward Alderheart's canopy above. Uh, yeah, you also met uh, John Al Hanu, a merchant from the distant mountainous lands of Fjernwelt. The uh, nomadic captain offered to sell you ox and cart, uh, as well as any traveler supplies you might need once you have the gold to pay for it. By noon, you maneuvered your way up the tree trunk and onto the canopy districts. With Magister Crane's letter of introduction in hand, uh, you now explore the high market. Uh, Chango and Pavo, you uh, thought it would be nice to visit Eliza in the Emporium, while Nevets and Ashling, you opted to seek rest at a local bathhouse. But, before all that... I'm going to roll back time a little bit, just a bit. Rollo, you with us? Yep. It is an hour before midnight on the last day. The Underfall's root system are dimly illuminated by blue wisp lights and lanterns suspended on creaking metal hooks. The weight of a haversack slung over your shoulder makes your back ache, but you're relieved with the thought that soon the package and the weight of what's within will be off your hands. You stalk the shadows, quickly making your way to the agreed-upon meeting spot. You follow the subtle markings made with chalk along the tunnel walls, careful to smudge the thief's can sigils as you pass them. You take a look over your shoulder, checking if you're followed. In these damp, dark depths, the sensation of eyes upon your back makes the fur on your back of your neck stand. You round a corner and walk into a dark alleyway that terminates at the dead end. With a bit of skepticism, you step forward and press your hand against the dirt wall as instructed. The hand falls through, passing the illusionary surface as if it was nothing but air. Pushing through, your boots touch stone, 
and the scent on the air immediately shifts from that of all the hearts under fall regions to someplace else entirely. I, I proceed on forward, quietly, cautiously. Your eyes adjust to the dark eventually, and you find yourself within some sort of a dungeon basement. See, Trent? There are dungeons in my Dungeons & Dragons campaign! Dungeons told Dragons. you! <laughs> <laughs> Behind you, you look, is a solid wall of stone that seems a little bit off, seems to shimmer like the surface of disturbed water a little bit. To either side of you, the walls are lined with dusty shelves upon which sit collections of curios and baubles amid thick tomes and several rolled up scrolls. You see torches and iron sconces that flicker with dying flames set embedded into pillars to either side of a large working table. Something large lies down on the table covered in a cloth. You look on, you see a tapestry hangs from the far side wall featuring Gasma, the Corvum Amaranthine. In her talons is a burning branch and her gaze is alight with the flames of revelation. At the other side of the chamber, a cloaked figure stands at the foot of the tapestry. Turning around to face you beneath its hood, you see a Corvum's beak and the glint of its eyes beneath the hood, reflecting the torchlight. Greetings, I have traveled far. I brought what you requested though. It's right here, and I and I pat the bag on my shoulder. I trust you were not followed. The not Corvum. at all. <laughs> the Corvum points at an open chest made of iron and lined with lead. Rest it there. You will find your compensation sufficient to keep silent regarding anything to do with this transaction. slowly make my way over and with both hands I gently place down where is it? Here? Here mind. <laughs> I, I I put it down mm -hmm. the satchel I'll make sure that it's it's still tied up. And I collect receive the payment. He helps you out extending the towel and pointing it at a wrapped up bundle by the chest that you pick up. Ten platinum pieces as agreed as well as a personal token of appreciation. When you're done, oh, yeah. leave the way you came. I nod, I inspect the coins in my hands, I mean, I'm counting before I leave. Indeed, I, I give promised. him a quick nod. Mm -hmm. Ten yeah. platinum, shiny, silvery, with a tint of green coins. Uh, that weigh a lot, like each. As well as a curious tube of copper, or some other coppery metal, perhaps brass, ending in a lens at either end, and a swiveling mechanism on the fatter end of the tube. Looks, some, looks something like copy address link. I can paste pictures in chat, I believe. Yes, I can. It looks something like this. Gotcha. Okay, I'll add it to the inventory. Hold on. Looking around, you see the chamber is lit by tiny candles assembled on various wooden tables. There are cauldrons filled with crimson liquid and bubbles and sends fumes into the air. Wherever you are, it feels cold. There's fog rolling across the floor. You are somewhere underground, but this doesn't feel like Alderheart. You note books, cleavers, bones, strewn all across these tables. Some of them arranged specifically in a row to make a spine-like structure before ending abruptly. Some of them just scattered as if they were tossed like a divination spell, trying just trying to understand what these bones and what, what they are and where they go. Is there anything you wish to do while you're here? Hmm. I don't know the full face of the cloaked figure, right? 
You look at him, he looks like an elder Corvum. His feathers black, his eyes are glazed white like moonlight. His beak, pure black with a coal like sheen, sheen to it. Uh, his robes, you note, uh, along with his hood, are cobalt in color, of this deep blue. And he seems to be leaning on a cane, even though he's in the still leaning on a cane as if to adjust his, his shoulder, or perhaps an old inch or something. Okay, he looks, well, I, yeah. I. I give, like, I appreciate him being a generous client for the pay. Gives you a slow nod as he continues on editing his notes and inspecting the item you handed over to him, which is. Really up to your telling. Okay. Uh, should I say it now or <laughs> should I wait? You can keep it yourself if you wish. Of uh, course, uh, for now. Time. Sure. Yeah, yeah, for now, for, for mystery, I'll keep it in. Sounds good. Hidden and whenever you're ready, unless you want to do anything else, you can leave the way you came through that shimmer in the wall. Alrighty, I'll slowly make my way over. Because, like, I'm in a hurry to catch up with y'all guys. So. Sure. Walking through the illusionary way gate, you find yourself back at Elder Heart's Underfall. Fatigue begins to set in as you realize you've been on your feet for over a dozen hours with you traveling with your group and whatnot. Um, it is dead of night. Where do you wish to go? Uh, do I know the exact location of where they are right now? Because if so, I'd like, I try to make my way in and meet up with them. Between getting contact with your Alder Heart contact finding out information you need and getting to this place has been about two hours. Um, if you had to guess, pure intuition would be there at some inn trying to find lodging and bed, yeah. Alrighty, since I'm like tired myself, I will try to find the nearest inn, rest stop, sure and thing. hopefully meet with them, yeah. We can say for the sake of expediency, with your business done, you eventually find a spot and rent a bed for the night, money no longer being an issue. A few coppers there, a few silvers there. You find yourself some food, bedding, and come morning, you may venture out to the city and meet up with a party. With your intuit skills, you can easily track them. Um, with that done, unless you wish to do anything else, it's up to you. Um, you may rejoin the party at any point during my narrative, okay? Uh, at this point, I'm going to fast forward to next day from where we last left off. It is just past noon um, of the next day as we continue our adventure in Alderheart's canopy region. Chango, you walk toward the old shop on the edge of the canopy's market. There's a door above which hangs a sign that reads Eliza's Emporium. You see a familiar cart has been unloaded and set aside by the steps of this building. Tagging along with you, you feel Pavo shipped within the barrel on your back. The shop looks a little run down compared to the other shops nearby, but you see that a project has been already laid out to fix up the place and make it look good as new. I think, what do you guys do? We enter the door. Okay. Entering the shop, you see Eliza behind a counter, a very bare wooden counter. It seems that she has just now begun setting up. Not The place is not even dusted down yet. There's a few leftovers from the last uh, owner, whoever there was, and she's just cleaning up. But she turns around and greets you and says, Ah, friend, you visit so soon. I, I, I'm not quite open yet, but uh, I, I, I perhaps uh, can't get you anything. And she points to you, to the kettle, to anything to drink? Sure. Just a Tea. Yeah, she Coffee. swiftly maneuvers. You see, she crumps a few dry leaves into a pot of cold water and begins to boil it. I, I, again, I'm not quite open. I still have my wares from the cart that I'm willing to part with if you're here to buy anything, or are you just here stopping to say hi? Don't go to saying hi. That's nice. I'll tell you what. It will take me a little bit to get this place in order, but uh, once I do... I remember your kindness, and I offer you this. Uh, how about 10% uh, discount on purchases, and if you ever want to sell me, I will give you a 10% uh, markup on the sale. 
Um, just as a way to repay for the kindness. Jungle thinks that's a good deal. I'll be here, taking over this place. Oh, so many memories. Last time I've been here, I've been about this tall. And she points just to her hips and tells you a little bit about like a time years ago when her sister ran a place, and now she seems to be taking over. Um, what happened, sister? Oh, she just went on. You know, we're a nomadic tribe, and we go where the spirit takes us. And I'm just taking over as while she's exploring the world, as I'm told. I'm sure she'll come visit sometime. What's her name? Her name is... Frelm. F-R-E-L-M. What? Frelm. Okay. I'm sure she'll visit sometime. If we ever see that on the road, can say hi. I'll appreciate it. You see the. It's just a know, hmm? You see that in addition to like her usual adventuring essentials, Eliza prides herself on stocking on one of kind items and treasures. Her stock consists of basic adventuring gear along with a collection of strange and unique goods uh, found in her travels. Uh, in comparison, of course, to Jonal Hanu's provisions, Eliza's shop is sparse, but the prices are fair, and they might get better in time. Specifically, if you're taking a quick look around, Eliza's Emporium... Also, I think I have a map for this. I do. I don't know why they have a map for Eliza's Emporium, but that's neat. Uh, Chungo. In case of combat. And Pavo is here as well. Combat? I, I guess, in case of combat. Do you have visual? I do not see anything. Let me change that. My eyes do not work. You go blind for a moment. Panic sets in. No. Okay. There I can go. see. There we go. I think we're God done. damn. Spooky music going on. I know, it was uh, Rollo's bit, so let me just force skip that and do something a little bit more cheery, shall we? Ah, uh, oh, hell yeah. We're back in Curse of Strahd again. Right? <laughs> there we go. Something a little bit more cheery. Uh, specifically, looking around uh, the goods chest to sell, you see um, some scroll of magic. Very few. Maybe three or four of them. Uh, she has... A, a few spell books to sell as well along her um, uh, more rare uh, stock. You see quivers, weird looking boots, uh, robes and staffs. Uh, they look mundane, but you get a sense that for the price that she's selling them, which is about anywhere from 350 gold pieces to 600, there's something more to, there to them than the, just the mundane looks. Um, She has other knickknacks, like a wooden eye, just an eye made of wood with a slip through it, a deed to a house in Breckenville, uh, a token with a ram's head on it, just general knickknacks. Still setting up. Who's that? That is a carpet. That's like the door in the carpet. Oh. Yeah. Looks like it's like raised up. I know, right? Yeah. Show it to you, Legrand. Sure. Again, as soon as she's still setting up, you see dusty shelves and tables. Uh, I wonder if there's any, like, there's no pictures. You see a, a series of, like, silver figurines, these uh, ravens that are set from smallest to largest, kind of like Russian nesting dolls in an array. She's assembled them and put them right next to one window. You see a branch statue that seems to branch out, and on each branch is a ring. And each one of them seems to glow. Branch statue, up. my head's at dying. Yeah. You see, okay. like, on each branch is a ring. One of them has a little feather engraving design around it. Another one has, like, these, like, flame-like designs with a orange gem at the tip. 
little bit scarce, you're still unpacking, but yeah. Jungle admires his art. There's a jungle admires the art. Because yeah. <laughs> he thinks it's art. Unless you wish to shop or do anything else in here, I mean. I'll Eliza. ask uh, if she has any heavy stuff that needs lifting. I have time. I actually do, yes, if you don't mind. Uh, just around this corner, she points you to like a back room where she stores the majority of the stock that she'll bring up front. Um, you know, you guys share a cup of tea and you spend some time helping her with the heavy boxes, just uh, lifting them up, placing them where she tells you, opening them, assembling the shop. About half an hour passes this way as Pavo just chills in your back and lounges catching a nap, I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, she shows you around the shop. There is one more room to the shop at the far back that serves kind of like her bed chambers where you put some of her more personal stuff. Things from home, from uh, the faraway lands of Fjernvild. Fjernvild. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Is it? I help. Neat. Jungle said his hellos, and Hunter didn't want to say anything. Whatever. To each their own. Um. On the other side of town, Nevets and Ashley, you were looking for a bathhouse amid the aristocratic bows. After a twenty-minute search or so, you eventually find just a place named the Steam. Respite. The esteem respite. The s steamed. Esteemed s steamed respite. respite yes. <laughs> I know. Oh, dumb. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you though? You, sh you should be. You really should be. <laughs> I love puns. Cause I'm not. I'm not sorry. I'm not ever sorry. Right. Um, do you guys enter or what's going on? Yeah, I'm ex I'm excited. Okay. I'm like it's, I forget. I'm, I'm basically and Nevis's mind is basically just a big swimming pool. Sure, looks like it from the outside. You see, out there are some outside pools, and entering within, uh, you are greeted by a fish-like humanoid with fine scales covering their body that range from these olive green to ochre color. And with a uh, stomach scales with gradient sea green and pale yellow. Its large eyes stare at you and gives you a toothless smile and wiggles its fins in greeting. Salutations! Help! Help! Look. Excuse me. And he grabs like, a bucket of water and just spills it on his head. Ah! Help yourself to some fresh robes and towels over there, yes. Behind me are the doors to the central cloister of cold lounging pools, and uh, to either side of you, you will find doors to the more steam and hot baths. The salt pools are below, if you are of the private, uh, if you are someone who needs more solitude. Enjoy your stay, and feel free to leave a coin at the fountain, should you feel generous. Excuse me. Ah, another bucket of water. Can I, um, I join in here? Like later, after they talk? Not? Yeah, you could. If you, this is where you wish to join, you can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You see, Grawl enter through the doors. Well. Like the, the bell rings, so I like, enter. Hello! <laughs> <sighs> Salutations! Help yourself to some fresh robes and towels behind me, gives you the same exact spiel. <laughs> like, a, like a rehearsed line. Choice of being well, service. yeah. While he gives you the whole customer store thing, you see the fisherman provides the vets with like these two inflated cuffs that look like they're little fit right around his like wrists. And as he mounts them, he pulls in like a string, and they <sighs> inflate a little bit. <laughs> Nevitz is like getting, Nevitz is getting his towels and robes when he sees Rolo, and he happily like runs over to him. He's like, Rolo, Rolo, where you been? Go see Rolo. Yep. Alright, well, 
I, I commented so as I asked Sash, so they're to. talking to you. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear. <laughs> uh, it, it, yeah, cut out. We were yeah, wondering, we were wondering where you were and how you've been. Happy that you're back. Oh, I, I've been good. I was meeting up with some friends that I used to um, go sailing with. I just noticed they were around town and uh, I couldn't resist. I had to go say hi. And I got lost, I said, shrugging my shoulders. Makes sense. This is, this is a big city. I'm back now though, so everything's okay. I had awesome. like cheeky snows, but... <laughs> <laughs> So, I miss is this a- is this an all-in-one bathhouse, or is there, like, different, like, spaces? There's different spaces and chambers. The central cloister is more of a cool bath to kind of to escape the summer heat place. S uh, side chambers feature saunas and hot baths and steam baths that are powered by, like, these mappa-constructed furnaces that heat up the water. Uh, there are more private chambers down under, digging into the bow itself, that feature, like, uh, salt water where you can just float around and meditate a little bit. You can go to the communal place or you can go to your own private chambers. Do you guys have any preferences? Do any of you want meditation time? Do you guys just all want to chill together? How what crowded do you guys is it? Do? Uh, the communal chambers feature quite a lot of both bird folk and humble folk. Uh, it seems like a popular place, especially since it's free of charge, technically. You just give donations to the fountain as you leave. Um, you know, it's it's like a YMCA populated. It's like a very central communal place. The private chambers are for people who wish to escape that. That sounds like fun. Yeah, Levitt's will point there. He said, let's, let's go into oh, the... Um... Oh, before they leave, oh, here you go. It's a special offer today. I'll just have two master of the stuff and just give it away. And he, the fishman provides you, all of you, three of you, these complimentary face mud ma mask kits that is just hence one to each of you. These like little bowls with this maroon looking mud. Really good for your skin, I hear. And he just kind of plucks a few scales off. Hmm. Nevitz takes it. He kind of just like nods. It's like, okay, whatever. Bowl of mud. I don't care. <laughs> and he's mud? like, come on. Go, go in the water. Water. It's going to water. Add that to my inventory. <laughs> bowl of mud. That's exactly what I just yeah. did. <laughs> You see the waters, whatever is in them, whatever minerals they put in them, change the water a little bit into these multicolors of yellow and, and, and green and blue. It keeps on shifting and you see a few folk relaxing them. Some of them healing old bruises, some of them just relaxing and minor healing properties of these briny waters. Yes. So... Uh, we join in, we just join in a communal one, and we chit-chat. Is there anyone interesting, do you think, that would catch our eye, that we'd be like, oh, we could go talk to that person? Looking around, you see all manner of bird folk, and some some hedges, some 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 uh, spiny folk with spiny backs, uh, just relaxing. Very average people, until your eyes glance over, and you see a curious sight. There's yellow salamander person about three feet tall lounging in, in one corner of the pool seems to really enjoy himself and every now and then he seems to pour from a flask this like red liquid to the surrounding waters around him puts it down back down and just leans back and relaxes you don't see many of salamander people around aside from that one lizard folk Never is just doing laps in the bath <laughs> <laughs> I'll sit and dip no, my foot. To... <laughs> I I decide to approach a salamander. Really curious about what the liquid is, so I approach him and uh, and and ask him. I, I go. Uh, this is a sir, right? <laughs> uh, by your guess, yeah, the salamander looks like a sir. Yeah. You see, he has like he has this really pale chin that seems to inflate and deflate as he relaxes with his breathing. His eyes are closed, but he opens one of them to Pikachu, and it's pure green with like a black slit in the middle. And just looks at your approach, and he's like, 
can I, can I, yeah? Yeah. No, no I'll, I'll make room, yeah, here. He seems to move the flask close to him along with this, like, black fedora-like hat that he has on the pool side with like, a feather coming out of it. Just moves his side, to, to his stuff closer to him as he makes room for you. There's so much. I was curious. Um, this liquid, I've never seen anything quite like it. Ah, this is a rare, very rare filter of uh, he seems to like shift his eyes around for a like thinking quick moment. Filter of health, you see, it really rejuvenates your whatevers and makes you uh, healthier. It doesn't seem really sure about what he's saying. It seems like he's making stuff on the go, but uh... they're essential oils. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> essential oils always. See that? Where they don't. Yeah. You know, if you're looking to acquire some, I know just the guy who sells them, and he points to himself. <laughs> uh, I, I I laugh jovially, and not to be made better, to embarrass him, just, just understand, or just to, well, I can't talk. <laughs> yeah, I know this. Um, He just blinks his gecko uh, eyes at you, um, like, confused a little bit. Thank you so much for the offer. I was just curious as to what it is. And then I walk back, uh, and then I say goodbye and enjoy the rest of your bath, and I walk back over. Enjoy yours, and, and remember, name is Spleck. If you ever need a, a potion, I got the best. Just find me up in the market when I'm not uh, half naked, and I will serve you. Thank you. <laughs> Tells you for a little place called Splexmander's Wagon of Worldly Wonders. Something to note. You guys spend a better. Le yeah. Levitz, after a few minutes, has gotten bored of just doing laps, and now he's trying to get like Rolo to come into the pool as well and swim. And he's like splashing her. He's like, come on, come on, come on, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I, I put my head aside and I join in. I hop in. This is the first time you saw Gorolla willingly going to water this campaign. <laughs> willingly? <laughs> yeah. It seems that even, um... Even your bat is enjoying the pools a little bit. Immersing herself. Just using her leather wings to float about and, like, sting- stingray- stingray flap about. I actually don't know if bats swim, but in my world they do. I think some I of them can. <laughs> That's a Google they do right I'll, now. I'll be back. I have to go to the bathroom. Hold sure. on. I feel fun. like they're probably kind of similar to birds, and they kind of like will enjoy like a bit of like bird bath kind of thing. Yeah, she goes to yeah, the shallows. Can. Yeah, I would imagine they, they can because they have the wings for it. So yeah, just yeah. stingray it. Yeah. That's weird. They do swim. Hmm? Oh, so you died. Chungo enters bathos. Jungle winter bath. Therefore, I enter the bathos as well. Therefore, Pavel winter's bathos. Oh, sir, don't forget, you just see this little little <laughs> fish person <laughs> wallow behind you. <laughs> face mask, complimentary. Listen, I have so many of these. You have Chungo to get them grabs off and head. slaps it onto his face. <laughs> <laughs> and Chungo oh, goes and lies Chungo. down on it, on the thing. <laughs> Why is it so humid? As you go to lie down, two fish people approach you, put two like, cucumbers on our eyes. Perfect. And go back to their post. <laughs> Graceful. It is actually quite relaxing, and if you still have any old lingering wounds upon you, this will count as a short rest. <clears throat> yes. Or if you have abilities, it depends on short rest. Do uh, you guys wish to do anything else in the bathhouse while you just sort of relax with steam? Now and then you see like this uh, custodian fish person walk around with a net, just taking all the the old mot uh, mottled feathers out of the pool and, and, and several quills out of the pool, just cleaning it and tossing it out a window because, you know, it will, it will reach ground eventually. Right. Um, no, nothing else, you know, just enjoy swimming. Sure. 
whenever you're done, you're free to explore onwards. Just chillin'. Yeah. I was gonna strip down and hop in the water. <laughs> what is nudity in this game? Oops. Nothing. I do exactly. believe Falcons have internal penises, so we are fine. You could have just kept Pretty wholesome sure and that's it then. Yeah, perfectly wholesome. Bird <laughs> stuff. I challenge ba Pavel to a breath holding contest. Bring it, you little shit. No my language, Rollo. <laughs> if you want if you want random alien facts, ducks have the largest ratio of uh, penis to body size. They also have a high long. tendency to, to sexual assault. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that females ducks have uh, that's also true. fake <laughs> vaginal areas? Ah, and Ooh, that's why the guy that's why well. You see yeah, a family yeah, of, of well, ducks, duck people too. just like in the corner, like p two parents pull their child oh, sir, and like, sir, just, like put their <laughs> sir, hands on their show ears. Me, and just, show like, me the explosive dick you have. Do it. Do it. <laughs> they just get out, put their towels on, and just waddle out and leave. And like, wholesome humble. Yeah. But no, but no, for and the most they, hilarious they part, load out at like 12 miles an hour. The girl duck has the opposite corkscrew. Yeah. Of the guy duck, so they have opposite yeah. corkscrews. You figure it's the yeah. same, but no, they're the opposite. Ooh, also, yeah. male, male, male ducks' penises can have barbs on them yep. to clear out competition. That's true. In the other ducks are weird. Vagina. They're weird. That is also true. My channel is for children. <laughs> no, it's not actually a child. Welcome, welcome to Natural Geographic. <laughs> oh, we finally, <laughs> finally got a I mean, this Mom, is all. You like, don't get to be knowledge. offended by science. It means it's like, this is like birds and stuff. So, anyways, yeah, breath holding challenge. Let's go, you little bugger. There you go. I was, do trying, it. To, I was trying so hard to change the conversation away from dicks. <laughs> it doesn't work in this conversation. <laughs> you should learn this by now, damn it. All right, I'm going under the water and I'm taking Nevitz with me. Wait, you can't. That's cheating if you pull him under. Well, well I'm, I'm looking at him and he's small. He probably floats really good because he's so little. Yes. Yeah. Rollo, as you watch Pavo put Nevis under the water, you look around. You know there are no, no safeguards. There are no, there's no nobody watching. So. There's no lifeguards. I'm no kind of concerned. Rollo's kind of concerned. He just watches carefully. We're gonna roll a Constitution saves to see who can hold the <laughs> <track> the longest. <laughs> I'm ready to like in case they pass out. I'll pick them up. Oh wait, actually, uh, isn't it um, what is it? Breath holding determined by Constitution? Usually. That's how long you can like go. What's your what's your constitution? A uh, small one. <laughs> small one. Uh, type out of character. It's a twelve, but I mean, I hey, mine's it. a thirteen. I hold my breath longer. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> now we know you've beat a child once again. They have ah. the same constitution modifier. No, I have a plus one. Oh, we do, but... He also but, uh... has a plus one. <laughs> oh, no! You guys tie. You can push we it. tie. You can well, push yeah, it. Yeah, push it. Give yourself... Give yourself <laughs> exhaustion. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good. Give one point of exhaustion. Damn it, if you give yourself one point of exhaustion, Just you can roll Just roll these 20s against each other if you want to push it. I'm good. Alright. Nevis? I'll hold Nevis underwater. <laughs> Come on, Lori. That means he wins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I bring Nevitz out of the water. Oh no, Nevitz! Uh, you, you won. <laughs> Yay! You, you, you see a, a fish person rise out of the water, and he's like, "No, actually, I win." And he dunks himself. <laughs> oh, the water. No. oh my god! <laughs> he's not even holding his breath. He's breathing under the water. I go over to Nevitz and and I pat him on the back and I'm like, it's okay, sweet dove. You'll get it next time. But but he won. He held his breath longer than me. Yeah, but he lost to the fish. <laughs> the fish cheated. Just a glup. Yeah, fish fish, the fish cheated. Fish. They, they breathe water. I wasn't right now. I wasn't I wasn't playing with the fish. It doesn't count. I won. <laughs> okay. 
Whatever makes you feel better. <laughs> you see more fish people swimming underneath the water, close to the bottom, you know, close to the muck and whatever else gathers and just kind of, whoop, whoop, whatever floats around. Ew. It's a spa experience. One of them like nibbles at your desk and on the foot of Pavo. And just like just nibbles a little bit. Get in there. Get in between the, the claws. <laughs> it's a what do you call it? A symbiotic relationship. I Pavo has had enough of the spa. All right. Time to leave. Time to leave. Let's go. Yeah. Oh. With that. Rolo, are you ready to go? Yeah. Yeah, I take my hat and everything. I'm ready to go. Sure. You dry off. That was a provided. You roll that orb off. Chungle dries off. His f feathers go poofy. Do you take the mud mask off here? You're just gonna own it. I take off the mud mask. Yeah. After getting in the water and all that jazz. Your skin feels so nice. Oh my god, so <laughs> nice. So smooth. Your pores just breathing finally. Oh my god. Yes. Yeah. Welcome to Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons, where bathing matters, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we must bathe. Potion of bathing? Yes. As you dry off and make your way out, sound with you if you wish, you can toss a coin to the fountain if you wish to come back or just. Toss a coin to your Witcher. I give them a coin here. Thank you for your patronage. I, I have no coins, so I I toss Nevitz. <laughs> I... Why is that always like, like your go-to? <laughs> because Nevitz can fly. No, I can't. Don't throw. I can't throw what? myself. No, I can't. But um, I toss a copper coin. You can jump well, in. You're in <laughs> there. <laughs> it's funny how I can I just imagine Pavel being holding Nevitz like. You know, Lion King style, off the edge of Alder Hard, like, but Nevitz can fly! <laughs> and Nevitz's like, no, I can't! <laughs> Just believe in yourself. <laughs> believe in yourself, Nevitz. Uh, where do you guys wish to go from here? Oh, I threw her in the, in the fountain. <laughs> Thank you for your patronage. Where do you guys wish to go from here? Mm. Um... We were meant to go up, Have we right? found them? But, uh... One of you. Hello? Hi. Are you sure we have to go to the council? Or yeah. did we want anything else? Um, no. Yeah, because yeah. we had, like, some paperwork that we had to go see someone about, right? Well, no, we have paperwork to go see someone. To the council! Sure. Let's go see the person. Or people. The council. Following yeah. those who know where they're going, you traverse higher up the branch paths ooh, to... Ooh. Mm -hmm. I'd like to find my brother so he may introduce us personally to the council. Sure. Does anybody else wish to join Pavo on his quest to find his brother? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna say, since both of you are looking around... Um, Either of you can rule with advantage as you are investigating around or rule investigation to. Uh, okay. With advantage, since you have jungle. Huzzah! You look around the bows and the aristocratic district. Um, you know that your brother wears that verdant cape that Rui brought, prides himself with, with those polished shoulder runs and that pin on his chest. Um, all the perch guard here wear a different uniform, blue and more regal looking. Um, you realize that your brother specifically was assigned to the un to the underfall and the bright hollows below. He doesn't. He guards the um, checkpoint between the aristocratic high society and the poor sectors of Halderhart. Uh, so he is but a wee man. All makes sense. Well, I suppose we'll do fine without him. So 
So just to the council. Turn around, okay. So turn around. Seeing as he's not here in the bows, you rejoin the rest of the party. Ten minutes there, ten minutes back. Uh, and I guess together you maneuver up and traverse up higher uh, the, in the branch paths. You feel the air grow cooler. Banners featuring the sigils of various noble families ruffle in light breeze at this altitude. Um, then and again, as you traverse across these like rope um, bridges, looking down, you can see it's quite a way down to the base of the tree. Here in the upper market, you see an area of shops built into the branches themselves, as well as vendor tents and stalls that uh, present goods before you. You pass by a two-story building nestled within the foliage. This stately structure is made of limestone has been fitted with a roof thatched with expertly crafted clay tiles. A sign uh, hanging above the door reads Zephyr and Co. Um, I think I have if yeah I do passing by this place you see a few uh, noble looking people dressed in really fine clothes look through the windows inside um, there's outfits of the latest fashion and uh, you see a luma uh, dressed in fine clothes and a small hat um, presenting what looks like a jade necklace to another customer. Shop looks like it sells very posh goods and luxury stuff. I immediately chung a tug on like Chungo and um, Ash Link's like sleeves. I point over to the necklace, like, can you stop there, please? Mm. Chungo, not that type of person. Oh, I'll take you there, Nevix. Anything for the little prodigy? Yay, thank you. And like, I have to start running without him. <laughs> there. That's better. Shit, I run after Nevix. <laughs> Hello, sir. Would you like a necklace? Hello, sir, madam. Look at the picture. Oh, damn it. What? Be back over here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This would look good on my <laughs> Wait, hold on. We have to make it perfectly fit. There we go. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> um... God, I wish that were me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, all right. All right. Give me, give me small again. Small again. Um, looking through some of the large glass windows, you can see a variety of fine imports and luxury goods that uh, reflect the hottest trends and most luxurious lifestyles of Elderheart's social elite. Nobility, city officials, Magnates of trade and industry, as well as other high society perch dwellers, roam the inside of. We need some posh music for this. Hold on. I got us. I got us. This is too chill. Yeah, I know. There we go. You know the price of the finest goods. No bargain is to be found here, as the store caters only to the most discerning of tastes. Nonetheless, you enter through the doors. Walking inside, you note the immaculate polished granite floors built around the living wooden stairway that connects with its net. Oh my god, what a sentence. You see a polished floor. You are greeted by a clerk, and as you enter, she escorts you to the right of a long polished counter, behind which another clerk works the till. You see jars filled with all manner of tea leaves uh, lying up on a shelf behind the counter, alongside rows of floral ex uh, extracts and essential oils from places as distant as the southern jangles of the Tangle Wilds. This counter stands at the edge of a large open show floor where extravagant art objects, some containing wondrous uh, magical items, I realize I've been playing the bathhouse. There we go. You see um, 
Extravagant art objects, uh, some containing wondrous magic items, uh, are displayed in these gilded cases. On the other end of the show floor, you see bottles of wine that are stocked on shelvings built into the wall. Furnishings are also displayed, uh, displayed here, both crafted by local artisans and imported from the workshops of various famed carpenters from faraway forests. Uh, some from Timberfell, if anybody knows where that, that is, and uh, some regions of Humblewood. A large display window at the front of the main floor features a selection of Zephyr & Co's wide variety of wares focusing on the prices and most en vogue of their catalog. You get a sense that these uh, displays are updated regularly and decorated to match the season. The windows are kept looking fresh and in touch with the current trends of the canopy. What do you do? Now it's just in awe at everything that he sees around him. He's standing there, like looking around, he spins in circles. <laughs> you see that same lady dressed in her velvet dress with a billowing front, uh, offering that jade necklace that we spot from outside to this elderly looking hedge. Um, she seems, she stands upright and she seems to really hold herself up uh, like nobility would. And you hear her speak. Yes, this right here is one of our finest in collection. For a mere fee of 2,000 gold pieces, if it will be yours to take, it will be the perfect gift for your granddaughter, I assure you. Mm. Guys, take a moment to browse around you see simple goods from wines being sold for about twice as much as you bought a bottle of wine down in the underfall to nobles jewelry perfumes and teas being sold at ridiculous prices uh, as well as a few enchanted items that are just held behind these glass cases with golden trimmings and locks at the bottoms of them um I kind of play around with like the earring on my ear, thinking if I should like buy a new one, maybe like a different color. I kind of look around. Sure. You looking around, you see the shop sells several outfits designed by well-known tailors throughout the wood. Each garment costs twice as much as you would have usually seen in your travels. Um, fine clothes usually costing 15 gold pieces. These sell for like 30. Um, oh my god. You get a sense of the guarantee, however, to allow anyone who wears it to look the part of a high society perch dweller. Um, you just glance over some of the names of designers, Ranels, Jacquins, Night Song, Lord and Lady, Thistledown, really high and parched uh, um, names. High Feather, Juniper, Shops. Uh, you look at several jewelry pieces, the same kind of sense of them, really. You get the, that same air, you know when we go to the mall and you enter that crystal shop that they sell those crystal statuettes at? Dostoevsky's, whatever they're called. Dvorsky's, whatever it's called. Okay. Usually, novels jewelry goes to 10, 10 gold pieces for like a set. Really shiny, really <laughs> eye catching. Nevitz has like his face pressed against the glass cases that are holding the enchanted items. And at first it looks like he's admiring the enchanted items, and then after like a second of kind of just like, you know, rubbing his face on it, he looks up to like um, someone from the store, and he says, do you sell the cases anywhere? Can I buy the case? One of the clerks just lifts her brow and she says, well, we certainly can make such an exception. We have more in back after all. We just pennies on. The dollar compared to what we sell usually, I could make a request to Zifa to see if we can um, make an exception for you, young lad, if you, of course, have the coin. Nevitz is smiling happily with like and like nodding his head, and he says, I want it to be like this big, and he holds his like feathers, his, his wings apart like six inches. Sure. And then like maybe like two inches high. Mm, let me see. 
And she approaches uh, that same Luma that has been fiddling with a jade necklace. Uh, you see them exchange a few whispers, and the Luma, lifting her brow, just turns around, looks at you, gives a courtly nod, finishes up with her one customer, and approaches you. Before you is Zifa Freewind. I think I have a... Yeah, there she is. Why, surely, child. Uh, let me see here. That would uh, run a measly 80 gold pieces, and we can uh, have a commission be done by day's end. Hmm. Levitt's heart sinks as he hears the 80 gold keys. He's like, oh, um. Like everything else in the shop, prices run high. Something's a matter. Surely it is the least of costs you will find around this place. Nevitz looks over to the um, to the shiny casing and says, um, "Does it come with the um, shiny rims?" Yeah, for sure. Of course it does. Shiny and polished. I will even throw in the polish that you use. I assure you, it will look quite presentable for whatever you wish to contain in it. Your guests will be jealous. Uh, may I ask, what is the occasion? Uh, personalities? Hmm? It'll be mine. Just flaunting your riches? Mm, yes, I want to put my shiny things in it. Good, good. My, you're so young. You remind me of myself when I was your age. Now, let's go ahead and rule me, like, just insight. As uh. she speaks to you, she addresses you like any other customer, not, doesn't matter what your age, um, whether it be because you are a fellow Luma, or whether you are still dressed in the same clothes that you had since you escaped home. Um, she seems to address you just fine. However, her glance shifted to the rest of your entourage, and especially those not quite dressed stability or showing signs of... Not dirt, because you, you're freshly bathed and all that, but still, like, rough clothing, like streetwear and whatnot. Gives them a little shifty look, like one would look on a lower class. By the way, I'm mm. back. Mm -hmm. My mother called. She especially looks like Shungo was carrying a barrel into her store and she scoffs a little bit. No, I'm staying outside. Oh, okay. Who's your new friend? How long did the box take to be made? A few days? No, about a day. It is. Yeah, I just need to set up the paneling and screw it in, give it a polish, make it nice and presentable. It should be done by day's end. Okay, I'll be back here tomorrow. Tomorrow it is. And you can tell from the tone that she doesn't believe you. <laughs> I try to sound very confident, like I'm definitely going to be here. <laughs> right, right. Well, don't forget your purse next time as she turns around to address her more frequent uh, loyal clientele. You are left to your own device as a small child in a jewelry store. Good God. You love everything, Nevitz. Yeah, but <laughs> the whole store. I walk away looking a bit upset, like I need to make ADGP in a day. <laughs> Wait, what happened to all your money? <laughs> I don't- I never had 80 GP, what do you mean? Oh, right, you spent it all on the fucking... the whiskey. Or whatever it was. It was... Mm -hmm. It was an important investment. I got a shiny bottle of, I got this very shiny and fancy bottle. You actually f I see one of those very bottles that you have in your inventory? I mean, assuming you don't bring it out. You see it on one of the shelves, and it is priced twice as much as what you bought it for. Along with other really shiny uh, baubles, like a crown of daffodils that is made of just gold and pearls, 
um, pearls just by themselves seem to have a blue gleam to them, some kind of magical power. Your sorcerer like senses go wild in this place, as you've been in proximity to magic atoms before, but this place just oozes it. Rings, wind fans, um, goggles, uh, this necklace made of like fangs and bone that are gilded a little bit. Um, a band that has fruits, oh. berries growing out of it, uh, uh, weaving in vines and then encased in this like semi-opaque uh, material to encase it all into this band. Davids yeah. looks at his um. Also. You see, like, like his insufficient. Yeah, go. You go ahead first. <laughs> I was just gonna say, Nevis look, Nevis looks at his like insufficient bag of coins, and he's like, "Why must I give up shinies to get more shinies?" You see a contraption. It looks like a backpack with these steampunk, steampunk-looking wings that furrow outwards, and the price tag below it is like four thousand gold pieces. You see a robe. The material is dark blue and it's, it's lined with like an area of stars to glimmer and shine. Another one that's made from pure feathers. It's, it seems to change into chromatic colors as it goes down. You see an egg. <laughs> a giant egg at the center of this room. It is glittery and starts golden and shimmers in the platinum color and is held in an egg case. And it's held between two layers of glass. Each with their own lock. Price tag below it, 5,500 gold pieces. On and on, you see more and more of these items just lining the floor. Is there anything else you wish to do here aside from feel sorry for yourself if you can't afford us yet? <laughs> just admire no, the jewelry. I, I, take, I leave upset. Okay. Pavo? Oh, I was just with the small child. True. Pavo has exactly no money. <laughs> Pavo is poor, but rich in spirit. Right. That's... <laughs> rich in spirit. That's... <laughs> yeah, very much. That's how I feel when I go to like those like tailor shops that sell full suits, and I'm like, one day. <laughs> Yo, fucking same. <laughs> Yeah, when you accidentally go up a pant size and your fucking uh, your trousers no longer fit, and you're like, no. One day I'll buy a full suit. Maybe on my wedding, we'll see. I mean, after all, my prom, I bought my suit from Value Village. So. Yeah, but uh, I think so my suit few came people to like at their wedding actually ever buy their suit. Most of the men rent it. It's like the thing. It's so unfair. I've been to a couple weddings recently, and it's like the men get to rent their shit, and the women have to buy it. And it's so expensive. I mean, you can rent dresses. It just costs about the same. Tell me where! <laughs> because they expect you to spill wine on that I thing. don't know a single place that rents the dresses. Lisa dress. <laughs> and the men don't? <laughs> Not of us black. All black. I'm sure there's a white section somewhere on that <laughs> anyway, back to the game. Uh, Rolo, do you do anything? You're checking out your jewelry. No, Judge. I'm not gonna get anything. I want to get something, but like, nah. Like, I'm gonna save it for now. Sure. Any questions before you leave? Um, I wish them a farewell. Good day. To you specifically, be because you're like, yeah, that vulpin got to you, and you're already dressed in these billowing clothes and fancy, fancy jewelry on you. The clerk just gives you a friendly wave goodbye and. Until next time. It doesn't seem to treat you any differently. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. I appreciate that. I uh, give a smile. Among the other stalls that are selling food, glasswork, and crystals, you also see a blacksmith hard at work with, uh, at his forge. Um, let me just force skip this. Um, he's hard at work at his forge. The blacksmith uh, workshop is built with an open concept showcasing his craft from raw ingots to the finished product that hang upon hooks on a wall the shop's sign uh reads the dame of flame do you wish to just pass by it or do you wish to give the visit you can visit later i'm just noting what's around here 
a fight with Wizarding later. Okay. You pass by the Dame of Flame Forge, um, and you you go to a less crowded section of the market. Here you see a large hollow in one of the Elder Hearts uh, branches that serves as the entrance to another vendor's shop. You see drapes of fine silk ornament, a sign above the hollow entrance that reads, Long Legs and Eggs. Just a hollow that seems to lead into a dark underbelly of the uh, tree itself. Jungle curious what the hell his name is. Hmm? I go down that path. I want to know what the hell it meets. Sure. And who does the party stick together, or do we yes. split the party? I stick with Chunko. To find a shop that's kind of ish, similar to the one we were, but that has much more affordable pricing. It doesn't look like a fine shop. Really, it looks like a, a uh, hollow I'm... in the tree. Is there a candy shop? Something to find out after this, perhaps. <laughs> Do, do you want I'm gonna go wandering uh, with with Nevitz. Well, like we're gonna go look for shops that we wanted to go while they go to the. So sounds good. We'll just the split the party. Is. We'll cut back to you guys as you go find a candy shop and whatever else you're looking for. Other finery stores uh, in the high market. You, the rest of you follow Chango. Yeah. Yes. There. Okay. You. Just about yeah. Just name. Following, uh, descending down into the hollow depths you follow a short tunnel uh dimly lit by magical motes of orange light until you make it to a hollowed out chamber that makes for the center of the shop you see other tunnels uh entrances set in the walls and ceilings a branch off from here from which you can hear a faint chittering sound all throughout Strands of silk flutter lightly across the floor. Strange saddles, featuring an intricate uh, strap system, uh, are laid upon uh, tables for presentation. They don't look like they are meant for horses. You see a tall elf woman with this green hair and lavender skin dressed in a silk robe. Uh, she is busy taking care of an egg bed laid for presentation at the back of the shop. The eggs uh, oval are wrapped in this fine silk that seems very familiar from the marshlands which you already traversed. Here and there, amid the corners, you see spider webs clinging to the corners. Struggle curious, what is this store? Mm, this? Uh, welcome, welcome. I. Sorry, I was just setting up. I wasn't expecting anybody. I don't get anybody, strangely enough. I am Adva, says the elven woman. This is my shop. I sell all manner of silken goods provided by my good matriarch, Charlotte. As well as exotic pets, mounts, should you seek that kind of thing. I hope you are not afraid of spiders. Mm, Chuggle, okay, as long as they don't have snake body parts as well. I'll browse around here. Yeah. Oh, or try to eat me. I deal only in non aggressive uh, species, I assure you. Charlotte, dear, if you don't mind introducing yourself, and she motions you over to the ceiling, and you see crawling from the ceiling is this giant spider with eight. Cyan eyes and this green fuzz to her body, and as she climbs down, Adva, the elf, gives her a little hug and a little kiss. This is my oh, assistant. She uh, helps me run the shop. Are you looking for anything specific? I have uh, very fine silks, elastic, and tensile strength is above average. Some say even stronger than steel. I have clothes made from spider silk and uh, other high commodities. I, uh, she points over the eggs. I can sell you exotic pets. The Ooh. brood is ready for hatching. It's just a little bit of care, and they'll be on your shoulders soon enough, so to speak. 
I also uh, sell a variety of items made by my fair Charlotte, and she points toward uh, a few items. There's a rack sack backpack, a few slippers that have like a webbing pattern on them. Um, you see a series of daggers lined up on the wall in the racks that seem to be made from fangs. Um, I see a very intricate looking cloak and hood. Again, it has that like spider web pattern to it. I also sell mature specimens. She points over the tunnels. If you have the coin, you can climb any wall and ceiling and will be loyal to you till the very end. Interesting. I, I definitely want to look at the matured ones down the tunnel if it's safe. For sure. Oh, I assure you it's safe. I've been training them since they were this big. And she shows three inches across her fingers. I nod. I'm, I'm looking for maybe a scorpion species. Color doesn't matter. All matter of crawlers in my caverns. Um, let me see here. That'll be uh, this way. If you don't mind, as she offers her hand as she climbs onto Charlotte herself. We'll be maneuvering upwards. Oh god, everything's so expensive. I'm so poor. <laughs> she pulls you onto Charlotte's back and together you skitter up one of the tunnels, eventually maneuvering to a nearby room where she shows you a fine specimen of these medium to giant sized scorpions that uh, are currently sleeping as they're no mostly nocturnal creatures, uh, but surely can be trained for other sleep cycles. Just while they're in here, they're all asleep. Uh, they range anywhere from 6 feet across to like 10 feet for the more mature specimens. Uh, most of them feature this chitin layering to them with, with, with defensive spikes along their claws, backs, and tails. Do note that unlike my spider specimens, these are incapable of sealing and web crawling, but uh, the tails should uh, make up for most of it. Very handy if you need to hang anything off them. Mm -hmm. I nod and is there like can I browse colors or can I just they come in all manner of colors anywhere from this deep yellow okra to green to blue to like this deep toxic red with black accents upon them gotcha okay how much are they I must say you're quite calm and I like it most customers are too frightened of these they go for about 80 gold pieces per plus Barding saddles. How many? I have the ten pieces of. I I ten platinum pieces go is about a hundred gold. It's okay, exactly hundred gotcha. gold. Right. I'll I'll give her. I'll I'll wait till like the party goes so they don't get suspicious of like the the very expensive coins. So like I'll I'll pay for it later probably. If you wish to make a purchase later on, I'll be here. I live here. This Out of character. Is, uh, yeah. Oh wait, I'm also not in the tunnel. Is it just me and you? Like, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll yeah, then I'll, like, the stuff I'll give it one I was gonna time. say, I was gonna say, out of character, you could like sneakily give it to her and then just go back to pick up the item at another time when people aren't around. I'll just say like I, I paid it with gold, like out of character. Like I'll just I'll, I'm gonna pay it with the uh, gold. I'll say. It's your call. <laughs> yeah, but I'll give her the platinum now for the mount. You hand her eight platinum pieces. You can deduct that and keep two platinum pieces in your inventory. And mm -hmm. she knows. Um, how would you wish for them to be saddled up and made ready now? Or shall I keep them here in my uh, stores until you're ready to for pickup? I believe I'll leave them now. I'll leave them uh, here for now. We're going to be... I tell her like the basic plan of we're gonna go up and we'll be busy for a bit, but we'll like, probably come down. Have your pick down. from the lot, and you get to name it, and I will take your name as well. Rollo, Rollo, Rollo. Okay, and I'm Rollo. You see, on a little with a little pen, she takes a big dried leaf and writes Rollo as well as a little tricom hat symbol, just to recognize you. <laughs> Whichever Alrighty. specimen you pick. She makes arrangements to make it ready for you to take it whenever it's. In terms of color and name, I might I'll like draw it later for myself to Sounds give like, a visual and name it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. 
and eventually she once business is concluded they put away your coin pouch she helps you up on the charlotte and you maneuver your way down the tunnels back into the central chambers away from the stables or whatever you call spider stables scorpion skate stables back to the central shop where chungo pavo resigned gotcha cool I'm happy. I'm done pretty much here. Chango, while you're browsing, you see what the handout says. There's silk roping offered clothes made from fine silks uh, that have been dyed as well as some magic items. If you have questions about any of them, I can answer. Mm. There's nothing that's actually stronger than steel, is there? <laughs> Ten fun fact, spider silk, when woven, is actually tensile strength stronger than steel. Tensile strength is... Sword? What if a sword was to slash me? Slash is not tensile strength. Tensile exactly. strength is how much you need to pull it before it breaks. Yeah, no, I don't need that. Fair enough. Also, Chungo would not have money. Ah, oh, I can imagine getting a spider silk string and a bow would be great. We would want to speak to the blacksmith. He is... Armor Smith's shop is just around the corner. I think you might have passed it on the way here. Um, oh, y yes, thank you, dear. Doubles is a Fletcher. Is just, just a thought. I am a bit uh, worldly at the moment. If you need to experiment, I do sell some silk rope right and silk strands right over there, and you can apply that to your bow. It is for oh, a very fair price. Thank you for the offer, but I am, as I say, broke. Right. Well, back in the barrel I go, I guess. I crawl up in it. Child crawls back into her channels. Who of the same kind, I mutter out of the barrel. And We're all the... much more connected than uh, most people realize, yes. The gentle spoken elf, uh, I've been showing you her wares, unless you wish to shop around anymore, we can move on to Nevets and Ashling. I leave. Sure. I'm just saying thank you. Ashling and Nevets, as you invest around for a candy shop, candy for Nevets, easy done. Candy even here is being sold for like about a silver piece per like, if you're looking for like candied apple or like car caramel woven onto like a stick. Honey, anything can be found here. Definitely gonna take rock candy. You know that ice cream has not been invented yet. <laughs> no. Ah. Neither did fizzy pop. No matter where you go, there's still not a market for fizzy pop. Ah. How much does rock candy go for? It's like a silver piece for just the rock candy. What's rock candy? I get candy? ten of them. What is rock candy? Because it just sounds to me like you're just chewing on a rock. You've never heard of rock candy? It is no. literally. What? It's like it's it's literally just crystallized. It's a crystallized. Sugar. It's crystallized candy. That's Sounds like a drug. <laughs> rock candy. Wait. Might as well be. <laughs> sure. Ship freshly from the. It's kind of like, like chemical like tables a of the eighties. We find prettier. some. Yeah. Okay. The clear. It's, yeah. Rock shop. Rocks? Rock candy. This sugar. It's pretty much collard sugar. Yeah. I can't believe you've never heard of rock candy before. It's basically, yeah, it's basically just like crystallized sugar. I can't believe you've never heard of Slavic candy. candy. <laughs> that's my you world. Got you there. Yeah, that's my world. That's your world. <laughs> All right. Uh, I can't believe I, you guys haven't eaten a whole ice cream cake before. Ice cream cake before? A whole one? Gross. <laughs> Nevitz yeah. gets like just 10 rock candies for himself, and he gives like two of them to Ashley. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, sweet dove. And I'm, I immediately just start eating them. It, my comfort food. It's my comfort food. pure sugar is my comfort food. Just... Yes. As you traverse uh, the markets, Ashling, do you are you looking for anything specific yourself? Was hoping, or I was inspired by the previous jewelry store that we had gone by and i was hoping to see if maybe i could find some kind of uh kind of like bit i guess it would be an armor store because i would like to get some like 
Greaves. So the blacksmith's shop will be perfect for that. Why don't you pass by when you were walking here? Okay, I did know if there would be a difference between the blacksmith and an armory. It's or, an old one, Fletchery, Armorsmith, armor smith, and Weaponsmith. He makes okay. anything from horseshoes to swords. And that would be it then. <laughs> yeah, because I wanted to get some greaves that would hopefully be a little bit like fire resistant to go with my, uh, since my whip got the fire blessing for it. <laughs> sure thing. All right. Where is that? I didn't know how to change it in my actual sheet of how to put the thing, so I just put it in as a note on my whip that it has the fire blessing, because I didn't know how to change it properly. <laughs> okay. Um, so you you find among the other stalls selling food, glass, work, and crystals and such, there is the shop that uh, has a sign that reads the Dame of Flame. Uh, walking inside... <coughs> Uh, approaching the smithy, you see an elderly strig of top-heavy, uh, minute and stout stature. Um, he has a hammer in hand, and he works a red-hot piece of steel into shape, sending sparks flying with each hit. Other pieces of armor sit idle at the work table beside him. Among them is a curious helmet with a mottled feather of black, orange, and white adorning it. Quenching the hot steel in cold water, Blacksmith looks up and greets you with a nod. Yep, yep, yep be right with you. Puts the hammer down. How can I help? Um, I've recently come across a fire blessing for my whip, and I wanted to protect myself a bit, and I wanted to get some fire resistant greaves. You and the rest of Amberwood, it seems <clears throat> tempering against fire in these times seems like almost like a necessity. I can provide that service, yes. Enchanting items being one of my specialty point sword, and especially looking uh, intricate, intricate looking forge full of various runes upon it. It will take me some time and will cost you some gold. Two days time for me to work on it. Should be done. As for pricing, mm, See, are you looking for, like, resistance from fire? 300. Interested. What? 300 gold pieces. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Who the... <laughs> 20. Welcome to the high canopy market. Uh, what can I say? Why would did we not do any of this kind of shopping at lower levels of the market? <laughs> Beats me. I would like this. Um, out of character. Can we? Are the can most we say the rest of them walked in? Sorry. What's out of character? I was gonna say out of character. Chances are the lower markets wouldn't have had magic items or enchantments or anything of that nature. Yeah, Nev Nevis in character would not. But it could have at least. Oh. But the thing is, I would at least bought the Greaves at a lower market, and then maybe gone to a higher market to get them enchanted. <laughs> That's surprising. I'm sorry. It's I would give you a fairer price, but I have to mark up. You see, uh, I've been having troubles with my trade caravans. They're being attacked by the coalition, and my wares are limited. Therefore, more expensive until such a time that the coalition is dealt with. I am as angered as you are, trust me. I would give nothing more than to show, show those bandits what's for. Really, pay them eye for an eye, if you know what I'm saying. Can we say the rest of the party walked in? Because I know they were on their way here. Sure. <laughs> Who's the coalition? The bandit coalition. A bunch of no good renegades running around the forest, robbing me blind. The rest of us blind looks to own the rest of the market. Just taking what they want. Sounds awful. They it do is. This every day? Every day for the past three centuries, my boy. Three centuries, and nothing's been to prevent it or fix it or Whoa. limit 
the damage? Perch guard have been going around hunting them. Sometimes we'll find a camp and we'll make arrests, but it's like squishing ants until we get to the very nest. There's no getting rid of them. They just keep spreading, taking more and more people. It is, after all, a vicious cycle, you see. You have people losing their homes to the fires, coming here for refuge, finding no help, joining the coalition, and it starts all over again. Bet you anything it is the coalition that started those fires in the first place. I'm not nearby. Weren't you guys on your... your They're in another shop. You guys went... When you guys split the party. People okay. were where they wanted to be. <laughs> Until yeah, but they were on their way to the armory, weren't they? They're right now shopping for giant scorpions. It's with you, Snevets. Yeah. And whoever makes their way to you in time as you're hanging out. Welcome to Indy. Okay. Nevis just announced his Um. He's like, hmm, okay. I look back to Core and I. And I thank him for the information and for the offer. However, I state that it's just a bit too far out of my price range and. I motion for Nevitz that perhaps leave, find the others. Oh, I Nevitz speaks up and says, can we get a discount if we deal with the coalition? I'll tell you what, boy, if you yourself deal with the coalition or manage to, I don't know, assemble together a group of people and wipe them out, I'm going to give you it for free. You're going to be doing me and the rest of these good folk a favor by getting rid of those no. bandits. But sounds like a deal. I really doubt that you can make a difference. Anybody can make a difference. The council doesn't seem keen on putting their foot on the metal on this issue. We will be back once the coalition has been dealt with. And then I take I grab Ashling's arm. Have a Sorry. good day. Find me if you need anything, really. I craft anything from Weapons, armor, be mundane or magical. Gives his chin a little scratch, turns to his work, turns to the hall, working on this intricate looking helmet with a feather. Oh my god, I just realized that lizard we met you? at the bathhouse, I could have sold him some special sugar. He would have loved it. I could have sold that guy drugs! <laughs> <laughs> he would have loved it. <laughs> he's just sitting on that rock and he just takes some of it and he's just like, oh. up. <laughs> Essential lawyers. It would have he would it would have been amazing. I could have convinced him that it did anything. He would have believed. <laughs> hey. Next time. Next Nevitz time. has an idea in his head as he's walking away. I, I really have You said that was all in your head. You didn't say any of that out loud, did you? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in my head. I'll be back. Oh, it's all in your head. Okay, I will not comment then. I I follow Sweet to uh, the shop and we go and keep walking around looking at different stalls. Um, I got everything that I wanted already. Now it says referring to the rock candies. He's got seven of them left. He's already eaten once. Just the second one's already in his mouth. He's like, maybe we should just head towards the council and meet up with everyone else there. Sounds like a good idea. As I also, <laughs> as I, as I eat one of the the rock, one of the two rock candies that uh, Nevis gave me. Sure. Are those rock candies drug? No, just sugar. I swear. No, they're literally <laughs> just. They're literally <laughs> just sugar. Your candy with drugs all along. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm just gonna return. Uh, I'm gonna wait for Trent to come back. If anybody else needs to go to the washroom real quick, they can. I already went. <laughs> Neat. I just need to make a quick phone call. I do oh apologize that I am also working while I do this. <laughs> so I seem distracted every now and again. But that is why. Oh my gosh, wait, would I be able to learn how to make rock candy? Could I do that? 
with. I mean, um, raw like candy sounds food. to me like just sugar and dye. It's basically just crystallized sugar with dye. Yeah, I have you, no idea. How you know, like basic it. alchemy already. You would know exactly how to make this in a matter of like a short rest, if you have the materials. Oh my gosh, we can make rock candy with cocaine in it. It's gonna be great. Whatever is the cost for the good you're trying to make, it's gonna be half that to make it in a matter of an hour. Special sugar rock candy. Yeah. I need to make I need to make more cocaine. I only have one hit left. And I wasted two of my leaves in my last attempt. Oh, I'm also out of I'm also out of the um the acid shit. I need we need to go back to that swamp. <laughs> the caustic acid, I think it was called. Yes, caustic slime residue. Caustic slime. Oh my goodness. I only have two leaves left, and I'm out of the. Co I can't even make it anymore. I just have the one hit of cocaine left. That's all. Sad. It looks like crystal meth on a stick, I'm not gonna lie to you. Water. Oh, yeah, fucking rock candy? Yeah. Water, white granulated sugar, food coloring, and flavoring. That's It's literally just sugar and dye. Yep, sugar yeah. on a stick, baby. You just caramelize sugar and you dye it and then you dip a stick. That's, that's all there is to it. Cool, okay. Could be good bait for like insect like creatures. Yeah. I'm just thinking about all the non eating properties it can have. Adhesive. All the advantages of sugar. Related to D and D, the um, the U UK's new uh, like light infantry fighting vehicle is incapable of shooting while it moves. Let me get myself a nice tea. Okay. I get myself a water. I could use it. I need it since start of session, but I didn't want to stop. So I'll be back.
back, had to make a phone call. Nice. so far I mean you guys don't have much gold on you now but you have future goals so whenever you do make it you know what you want to spend on some of you want to buy shiny some of you want to buy oxen cars some of you want to buy boots that will make you able to walk in coals when we deal with that what the fuck are they called mm -hmm. We'll get tons the of bandit gold. coalition. The bandit coalition. The bandit been... coalition. Yeah, they're robbing people every day. They gotta be loaded. Yeah, we're gonna be. <laughs> you actually, the, those are the bandits you battle on the road. Those are the bandits who are calling out Trunk all the time. Those, yeah, they are a repeating theme. It seems. Um, I mean, you would know that Chungo. Well, hi, Lyra. The Chunga used to be in the Bandit Coalition, but uh, he uh, deserted before joining you guys. Yeah. Is this really the first time you're hearing about them? This is the first time we've heard their name. We had a general idea before that there were bandits who regularly attacked right. people on the streets. Fair enough. Yeah. I thought we knew they were called the Coalition since Session 1. I, I sort of said it during the like the whole world building bit that this is knowledge that you all know um because you guys live here you've grow, grown up doesn't matter where you're from you've heard about it but the band coalition same as you Lori, and know about 9 11. it's just history right mm -hmm. it's a calamity there has been the calamity forest fires there's been the band coalition going on for the last 30 years a whole bunch of stuff. If you if you and I want to sit down later after session and just talk about world building stuff, or if you have questions now, I can answer them while we wait for Trent. He's saying he went for P, but I'm pretty sure it's not P. <laughs> so no one trying it's gonna be like 15 minutes while he's dying. He went for a poopy. Get it? Ha ha ha! Yeah, I get it. Yeah. So world building. If you have any questions, I can answer them now. Or if you want to converse about anything else, we can converse. Oh, yeah, just uh, how, how accepted is magic? Magic is very much accepted. Uh, the only thing is that it is... I'm going to open the map for this to explain this. It is contained within the Avium. The Avium being a college of wizards of such. You can see it right over yonder on the map. Ah, uh, yes. Up in the map. Uh, if you are born of magic, typically your parents would send you to the Avium to study, hone your magic. That way it's not random like Nevitz. Nevitz magic is very... He was born with it. He can control some of it, but a big part of it he can't control there's forces in play that might be lethal which is why most bird folk and humble folk who are gifted with magic are studying avian you've already met susan for example who got kicked out of the avian and now she's treated like a witch so while magic is accepted it must be controlled see magic shaped the wood magic shaped elder heart druidic magic helps heal the so torch what of growth. what of people who obtain magic who were not at first magical. Like, they study the Avium. It's just like getting any other degree. Um, you, people who are not born soldiers and want to become soldiers could go in that profession path. You want to become <laughs> magicians. When you're born a child soldier and you're like, ah, yes, my profession calls. If you're to that family and you were born for that destiny, sure. But if you want to become, become a consul for the High Bird Council um, or, or a help builders by levitating heavy lumber and stuff, you study in the avium. If you want to help uh, heal the scorch grove or do other services that heal the forest or speak to trees, all that nature stuff, you join the tenders. It's another faction of magicians and druids. Um, other than that, if you're just a renegade, the Magister of Winnowing Reach put it right, uh, where if you're just a rogue magician, it's as dangerous as being criminal. Mm-hmm. It is accepted. You'll have like magic items being sold all the time. You'll have magic resources being sold all the time. Most of them made in the AVM. Very centralized. Okay. It's 
Same question can be extended and how did they treat rangers? If you have a profession, if you're a hunter, a trapper, if you're a soldier, a scout, fine. If you're a renegade, roping people on the road and using your bowman skills for that, well, then you're a criminal. Right? It just that magic is ten times more dangerous than that. What a magic. Okay. What do you think, Lorian? What do you think your character's up in Baldur's Gate right now? At this very moment. Ooh, Aiden? Yeah. Fuck, I don't know. What, how long has it been since the session ended? Since, since the last session ended? it's We are on session 7 right now, every week. It's been like a month and a half. More. Probably just doing paperwork and stuff, you know. Exciting. I imagine, I imagine he would have gotten all the things that he thought that he wanted to do with done within like the first month, like getting rid of certain items, giving certain items to certain people, stuff like that. I imagine this shouldn't take more than a month to do. So at this point, it's like he's settling down. Fencing away unwanted items is like Baldur's Gate's biggest thing. With a criminal under under work, under under. Belly. Oh, not even that. Like um, like for example, the book um, the tears book. What, what was this called again? Fun with tears. Fun with tears. Yes, I was planning to give that to um. Sylvika, I think her name was. Because the book said in the front cover that it was addressed to her. Right. I was going to do that after we got back to Material Plane, among other things. He probably would have gotten rid of the cursed necklace by now, because that's not going to help much once you get back into the world of politics. No, that was for fun, I know. <laughs> Trent, dude. It's one hell of a key. Maybe, maybe I would have hired um, Hector as a bodyguard by now, who knows? How long is Hector think, spending I in a verse? We agree that Hector could like be your bodyguard, and then like he's like, "Up, oh, I gotta dip. Boss is calling." <laughs> and then we just yeah. like, <laughs> he's like, "Oh shit, are we cornered in an alleyway right now." Um, here, here's a knife. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> sure. Not sure how accepting like common folk are from a half demon walking along their midst, but you know. Hey, I I have a I can disguise myself. Yeah, that's what I thought. But... Until we get into an alleyway and people are like, Oh, we're gonna fuck you up, Lori. And I'm like, Oh, I'm gonna fuck you up. Comes with Lori in shadow. Oh, no. God, I wonder what Dorian's doing. Like, like five sessions ago, five campaigns ago. That's okay. I can't be attached to my characters? You can, I'm just thinking. I don't know. I'll probably continue the storyline rather than be like, what, where are they now? Because that story never ended. Yeah. Oh, jeez, poor... Well, at least at least Ashling's on, on a call, too, so... I think Megan is done. I'm here. I've been here oh. for a while. I'm doing I'm doing the horrible thing and I'm also working while playing D and D. <laughs> Hello, I'm back. Okay. Trent's back. How was your poop? Listen, man, don't judge me just because I. Have I judge normal. you harshly. You take no. 25 minutes of my session dying, I will judge you. No. Right. Back at it then. Ding, ding. So, finally. After your little shopping uh, detour there, you reach the upper levels of Elder Heart's canopy. Climbing up a stairway leading up through the massive central pillar, you arrive at the Council Plaza. A range around an open plaza containing a large statue of a Sarah Luma dressed in ceremonial robes 
are government buildings related to the oversight of Elder Hearts and Humble Woods lands. Nestled within the branches is a courthouse, a jail, and the Perch Guard headquarters. You see, the statue is an effigy of that of a Saraluma dressed in ceremonial robes, um, a placard embedded into the statue's uh, bottom reads, Speaker Ava, founder of the Birdful Council. You see a huge dome structure rising up through the foliage that can be none other than the Birdful Council chambers. The building is cradled into the natural curve of Alder Hall's giant trunk. A large platform has been built all around this uh, imposing structure, connecting it to the branch roads and uh, that run throughout the city. It is adorned with a brightly colored banner, uh, surrounded by other banners, displaying uh, all matter of crests of major settlements of wood and uh, noble families. You see two guards in resplendent armor stand watch at the entrance, turning away those who do not have permission to enter. A throng of people mill about nearby. What do you do? What's, uh, what's the majority of the race looking like up here? Uh, a, a good mix of humble folk and bird folk alike. Uh, not to be, not too many mapaks, <coughs> not too many vulpins. Uh, mostly herbivores, like, uh, the deer people and other bird folk. I think I, I have, in one of the pictures I've given you, like the one for Hanu's provisions, Features of that exact building. There you go. With a statue too. Cool. It's mostly bird folk. High society. That's nice. Yeah. How do you push it? I guess we're gonna go up to the guards and present our paperwork. Yeah. Presenting your paperwork, the guard to your left roughly grabs the paperwork. Let me see that. After giving the scroll a thorough read through, the guard moves to the sign, stiffens his back, and gestures onwards toward the door. Everything seems in order here. Please join the other petitioners. Oh, what was that? So strong man. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Please join the other petitioners. And he goes and he addresses others trying to get in, turning away most. You, if you proceed past them, you see the waiting room exudes an air of authority. You see long scrolls with fancy ink borders are framed and kept behind glass. Each is hung on the wall to form a neat array on either side of the room. Each scroll is filled top to bottom with text drafted laws and uh, other uh, lines of text that affect the entire wood. Each scroll is detailed and signed by the Birkfell Council and finalized with a large wax seal. The oldest of these is the original copy of the Humblewood Treaty, hung above the main doors into the Council's chambers. Its frame is made of shiny platinum, shaped to represent every race of the wood. All the petitioners are assembled here. One by one, they are led in to be heard. Some leave with content faces, others leave unsatisfied and fuming, but containing their anger as to not make a scene. Question. I want to read the Declaration of Independence. Well, question first, then the Declaration yeah. of Independence first. Yeah. Um, is this a democracy or a republic? N neither. Uh, it, it, he hegemony, I think is what it's called, right? When you're being ruled by a council of authoritarian higher class people, several people. Mm, uh, you tell me. It's being, the Humblewood is being ruled by a council of five people, five nobles. The, the people don't vote. So it's not a democracy or a republic, I would think. Okay. Hegemony. 
I believe it's pronounced hegemony. Yeah. I believe you're right. I just not my language. Yeah, it is hegemony, but nobody <laughs> likes hege everyone. No one likes hegemony. <laughs> Let's be real. Whatever it is called, it is a a council of five bird folk that rule all in Humblewood. Make all decisions, etc. They hear the people contemplate, but in the end, it's their call. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> Tr Trent uh, Chungo approaches. <laughs> the Declaration of Independence, as I said, it is framed by this really fancy platinum frame that features all manner of living creatures and all the races of wood. Uh, it is, I mean, a very fair comparison to the United States Declaration of Independence. It is a treaty that a, a quick read through will tell you uh, is the reason why humble folk agreed not to eat each other, essentially, to leave, leave at peace and forego the ways of the hunt and live in harmony with each other um, yeah it's been signed years ago give it to me are you just trying to steal to the declaration of no. independence I'm gonna read it okay mm. Sure. So the general, Give me a moment. The general thing does appear to be hegemony, but I think it falls under either more of a of an oligarchy. Sure. Or oligarchy is like ruled by elders, right? Or perhaps an autocracy, an autocracy. Autocracy is one person. I, think. I might be wrong on all fronts. And I'm full of shit. Uh, it can be one person or polity. Like a political entity of a group of people that have a collective identity, but that probably doesn't work. So, perhaps an oligarchy, noble, wealth, family ties. I am looking through my notes to see if I have a copy of the declaration beyond the summary that I remember it from heart. Do you really want me to spend time looking for it, Trent? Is there loopholes? <laughs> Rule investigation should hold through my plot. Do you, do you really want to eat people? Is that it? <laughs> oh, other things. Is there loopholes? <laughs> Anything about like, you know, class and whatnot? No, actually, it, it is actually the contrary, where it was speaking how every folk should be equal, uh, no matter race. Uh, no more predation, no more prey and predator kind of dynamic, more everybody help each other and live in a community. There is no one class rules the other. It is just happened to be so because of circumstance. Hey. This is Okay, I'll give you more information about it in a, in a moment when I, don't, I just don't want to browse the book for hours on end. Browsing around, finally, after waiting for what feels like an eternity uh, for trying to take a piss, another guard loudly calls your name and instructs you to enter the chamber. Now, one more question. What are we here for? <laughs> Does anybody know? To talk about the fires and what we think about it. And what we know about it. And what can they do about it, too? And what can we know about it? And insist about it. Mm hmm. The fires, are, the fires are growing. Lots of black ash. Very big and very scary. Um, spreading from Sports Groove. Uh, ash occurring. And we came here to talk about it. Okay. As you pass Nevitor, through. Nevitor. Yep. Nevitor will relay all of this to. Out of character, I relay all of this to you guys because you're. Don't. In character, you really are. <laughs> yeah. As you pass through the double doors into the council chambers, you see a group of stately bird folk arranged across elevated seats. Am I? Can you guys hear me right now? Yes. Yep. Okay, good. Because Rhythm was having issues there. Each council member has a tall podium in front of them, rising to just above their waist. A sheaf of papers is ordered neatly upon each podium. A circular apparatus in the center of the ceiling allows sunlight to shine in. 
a wise-looking bright gallus rises at Helen in greeting and addresses you as you enter. You now stand in the presence of the Burful Council. I am Chamber Speaker Beta. Please state your case. Beta. Let me... I do have a picture of her. You people are better at words. Speak up! Nevitz will uh, step forward, looking a bit nervous. He says, um, uh, things are starting to get really bad outside. Um, the fire and the smoke is spreading um, from the Scorch Grove. Um, Ashboro is in danger. Ashboro is uh, in danger? It's past. I think it's past the Ashboro Hills. Yes. We know of the fires, yes, is. it's going all around. But what is it of Ashboro we speak of? Ashburrows is burned down. That is... She closes her eyes for a moment. Unfortunate. It's another one. Another council member speaks. And what of... Well, you come here as... Asking for aid. I, I, we're so thinly stretched as is. Uh, were there any survivors? Um... Of one woman, I believe. One? Gods. It's getting worse by the minute. Peter speaks up. You see that they're... We need to do something about it. The fires, they're very scary. They're listening very carefully to your woes about Metafen. And you see their faces are silent to hear Fashion Burst Destruction. You can make your cases as they come. Jungle would like to know what you guys know of the fires. Well, we are aware of the spreading fires, but our primary concern is with the banner tree jeopardizing the big city and essential trading hubs. The banner ranks have swelled as of late, and the perch guard can only be spread so thin. Just without our supplies, I'm afraid there isn't much we can do. Besides help ourselves and our city. The bandits have been rallied, you see, by some fearsome leader, making them bolder than ever. Little is known about this new leader, but uh, we were able to corroborate with our sources and know that she is a ruthless servant female named Bena Seridan, who holds a great hatred for all the, all the heart. We also know that Alderhut could support more refugees, but uh, we prefer to remain cautious in these difficult times. The fires keep spreading, and after all, if all the refugees are allowed to enter, how long before the city runs out of food and other essential resources? Hmm. Most troubling indeed, all this. We must confer with Ashenbaro added to the numbers. We must confirm amongst, our, um, amongst ourselves, yes. If, um... If these bandits were to stop raiding people in their streets and stealing their supplies, could you divert more, divert more efforts to, um, help with the fight? Surely, without the banditry being a concern, we would be able to send more supplies out and help the people, of course. You have done well to deliver us this news. Um, we will confirm amongst ourselves, and we will send word to meet with the party again, say, tomorrow afternoon, to uh, see what aid we can offer to send to Meadowfen at this time. Uh, we assure you that aid will be sent, but we ask for your patience during these trying times. Sending a cart of supplies along battered ridden roads will not be easy, and any guard we send as an escort will be less protection to the Elderites. Okay. Um, we'll be back here tomorrow afternoon. We will send word. Where is it that you're staying? It's done. My head's a duck. Hmm? 
Uh, we saying? are down in the lower quarter. We need to yeah, send somebody to find you. If you could be more specific as to where exactly you're staying, that would really expire things. I don't remember blushing. the name. Uh, blushing tankard. Blushing tankard. Squints a little bit. Fair enough. We'll send three people just in case. Um, until then, unless you have any other issues to report or anything else to say to the High Council. Uh, before we leave, I would say that uh, I would consider enlisting the help of adventurers in dealing with the banditry. Perhaps that be up. Extra judiciary powers extended to people that are not behoven to the communal law. It's good expedite your issues. <laughs> are you suggesting people who are willing to commit crimes? <laughs> I'm suggesting people that have the authority of the council, but not are fully hindered by law, could uh, deal with the matter promptly. Are you insinuating that these so-called adventurers are not hindered to the law? I mean, they are, but if you give them permission to not be hindered by the law. Then we will have chaos, and we're no lot better than the brigands which we are fighting. I think... The bandits have already brought the chaos to your borders. Time to bring the chaos to the bandits. Looks over to an especially elderly looking strake in the corner who gives her squint back. Sounds a bit like you when you were here 20 years ago sitting in that seat. We will consider your word. Now, unless Fair you have enough. any other issues to arise with the council, we have plenty of other patrons at our doors. So what's the, uh, what is everyone of the council? Uh, you see the Luma before you. There's an elderly looking strake, his feathers are already craying. Uh, um, they're all bird folk, if that's what you're asking. Okay. All seem to be of high-born stature. And if you were looking for points, there you are. That's so far what I told you. We will send uh, a ranger to glide off the canopy and deliver a ward back to Metalfen, as well as a scout to Ashton Barrow to scout out and see if there are any other survivors who may have escaped the chaos. Fair enough. Good day to you then, Council. To you as well. With the hearing concluded, the party is dismissed. You may use your day to roam around the canopy district's shop or do whatever else before retiring for the night. It's up to you guys. I'd like to see <coughs> if I can find my brother and see if the family home is doing all. I'll go along with you if you want. I'm just By gonna go to the Right. Chunko, did you have anything else that you want to do with console? No. No? That music was so good. Because I honestly. forgot about everything I was thinking about during the week. That's what I figured. Okay. Well, yeah. maybe you'll remember it later. Uh, we talk to them again yeah. tomorrow, so... Right. You eventually find your brother, uh, Pavo. He's located at the same checkpoint he, that he is. Sort of lax back and half-napping since he has a night shift coming up. Where are you, Magnus, you magnificent bastard? Ah, uh, there you are. Brother! Oh, Magnus. See, you lived. Even though you stayed we in just that had place. Yep. Pomp his council chambers. You didn't like them? <laughs> Who does? Do you, you didn't even know they existed before you saw them, Nevitz. Sure. They seem very nice. They have to be. 
other political figureheads. Yet uh. they don't know what's going on around them. Isn't that right, brother? No, you are always wrong. Always, always wrong. You've never had the astute eye nor the astute ear to listen to what is being told to you. Don't follow it. You were always an agent of chaos. And I despise you for it. But I must love you, for you are blood. Brother, why do you sound like a robot today? Is your program gone faulty? <laughs> How would you like me to sound like? <laughs> I came to see how the house was doing. The house. My house. My residence. I assure you, is in splendor. Ah. Uh -huh. Do you still have my spare room, perhaps? Sure. I kept it just as messy, for I dare not touch it. God knows why I lift and what I might find, what might sting me if I lift it. I'm having trouble with my Discord. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am uh, good. I'm super running and mom and I watching TV, but like it's not that bad. Yes. Damn you mother always watching the te oh. television. <laughs> Wretched things. Moving pictures. <laughs> Unnatural it is. Mm. But I I still have your spare room. If you forgotten anything, feel free to take it out of there. By all means, I'll head over there now. Is the door locked? Surely not. You cannot trust anybody around the city anymore. Not with the likes of you skulking it about. But here, he hands your key. Thank you. The I'll keys. I'll try to keep my crabby little hands off of your thing. Now, and I'll make sure to wipe my talons before I go in. You would know that Magnus resides in the bows, in the more aristocratic section of the canopy along with other bird folk rather than mm. here where he's stationed mm. to the uh, autocracy sure are you looking for anything specifically from your like earlier Trouble's days with them. yeah I mean at this point you're in your own territory describing your own background yeah uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a change of clothes <laughs> <laughs> What's, are What's, yours, a, are uh, yours a little slimy still? Uh, no, they're just a little used. Gonna Pavo goes goes into basically what you would, what, what would probably have been a a a, a closet. <laughs> You're describing your own background, man. M Magnus allowed him to to say there, maybe what. Would fit Rolo quite well. Nevitz would surely admire, but Chongo barely could squeeze through the door. Chongo's here just Wait. to look at shiny objects to possibly not steal. Chongo, <laughs> you still I'm influencing the, <laughs> influencing the party. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, we go mm -hmm. in. I'm going to grab a. It's not terribly fine, but a little bit better clothing than the poor folk wear put those on a couple little little spurs from my adventuring days you no longer look like a burrito now you look like a fancy cowboy spurs spurs baby <laughs> we used to ride giant squirrels oh, across the, to double across the yeah 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 Gi Gi i used to ride a giant squirrel across the canyon i only have spurs especially after i have they, they, i have extra part of their physiology spurs now. I have four sets of spurs. <laughs> uh, I take a I take a, um, a, a religious book and a uh, gotta have small my Bible. Bible. I have my Bible. Bible. What do you worship? And... Uh, Rhea? A chimera? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> I, I worship Bahamut. <laughs> now we have dragons, see? Dungeons and dragons, Trent. <laughs> there, there we go. Right. Um, I, uh, I open up my sock drawer and I pull out. Ew. I and you're gross. like, socks? He doesn't wear socks, you're right, but Magnus <laughs> never he realized that. There's a drawer wore socks. under your bed just randomly scattered? Weird. <laughs> the sock drawer. Open. 
I shove some socks aside and take out a hollow bottom. And in lies a small case. I open it up. And there is... A gun! No, kidding. There is a, uh, an ivory pipe that belonged to my father. I Ocean exchange... <laughs> yeah, I can't just give myself a gun. No. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. From the vigil... <laughs> I put the gun in the pipe in my mouth. It's a gun pipe. <laughs> the, it's a I gun in my pipe. mouth. <laughs> oh my god! A no. blow dart pipe. Blow dart <laughs> pipe. Yeah, let's for, anyway, I, I take the ivory pipe. It used to be my father's. I put the, the hollow bottom back in, put the socks back in. I go to the second drawer. I'm on the edge of my seat. Yeah. I take a little a little amulet and I put it on. <clears throat> It was my mother's. I am too old to be a Rascalian. But not too old not to cause mischief. Okay. okay. I also take a... Put out his grave. A, st a stink bomb, and I place it at the entrance of the compound for when my brother comes back. I take out three healing potions as well. <laughs> I gave myself a pipe. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> That's all I came for, was a change of clothes and a pipe. Sounds good. You could have, like, bought it for coppers, but it sounds good. <laughs> yep. Better, it's, it's, sen better. it's sentimental. It's yeah, sentimental. right. It's, it's background. <laughs> cool. cool. Chungo's stealing a vase. Stealing a vase. Uh, Chungo, no. Chungo would like to make money. Ch Chungo, no. Chungo, put my mom's ashes back. <laughs> put my mother's ashes back. Chungo puts the ashes back. Chungo goes to a different silver vase or something. Oh, not my father! <laughs> Chungo raises his arms like, why do you have dead people all over your house? They die, okay? I'm old. I go to a third vase. No, that's my little sister. <laughs> that's... Why Jesus are you making Christ. your background so dark? <laughs> I go to a fort. No, that's my great over. great grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> just just all the vases are full of ashes. <laughs> all the vases are ashes. Leave this the is body. their family shrine. They have a family shrine, okay? They're, they're all I know away. exactly <laughs> something that is not made of ashes from dead people. I go to the. Is that made of? It's a container. No, jungle, not the silver. Magnus is fucking anal about his silverware. Do not. Don't even touch it. Don't in breathe the spoon. on it. No, 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 don't, 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 don't do it. Un Uncle was mean all about the silver. The he just kept shoving it up his butt. <laughs> no. Humble and wholesome. Jungle, don't, don't oh steal from him. All right, He's... I mix up his uh, silverware. No, God, no, 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 no. We gotta go. We gotta go. He's gonna come. He can feel. It. He can feel it. I we must run. I go around the house and I tilt every single picture a little no. bit. So, somewhere, oh, jungle, somewhere jungle. in the bright hollows, Max just sits there and you're like, Ugh. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I felt a disturbance in the force. Silverware. <laughs> that is Chungo's last thing. Uh, Chungo hits one of the paintings and a secret door opens. Chungo goes into secret room. <laughs> we go down to the family vault. Have fun, guys. I'll, I'll be in the other room. <laughs> Just get DM yourselves. Like, so you're, it's fine. Just down here a billion gold. There's ten million gold. Oh, weird. It's a portal right, to Ravenloft. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Triple fills up his bag with all of the money that this is totally canonical having. Chungo falls <laughs> off Alderheart's branches and cracks his neck. Chungo can fly. <laughs> Chungo dies. Chungo is heavy glider. I can fly well and for comfort. I mean, not to tell you to play Trent, but uh, crime sometimes it pays to be bad. If you want to do like a downtime activity and uh, roll some dice, you might find some loot around. Possibly. Yeah. I was just doing this for fun. Anyways, I, I grabbed the things I wanted to grab from my house, but I'll, I'll keep this key handy. I am keeping in the fact that I move the forks around and I move a little bit of the paintings. I'm sure Magnus is going to love that when he comes back. Yeah. He doesn't know Chungo is in the house, he only knows Pavel was. You come back, next time you see him, he just has like eye shadows beneath his eyes because he spent all night fucking ordering everything back. See, see his eye twitches a little bit. Uh. 
family oh, matters. I, I make sure to lock the door on my way out. Does he have a spare key? Like, hey. as in, does Magnus have... What? No, but I, I'm going to take the key back yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, just lock him out of his house, too. <laughs> my house now, Magnus. Uh, Dom's frozen again. I'm here. Are you sure? Is yes. Alright. Is my face frozen on your end? It was. Um, was it a good face? No. No. Okay. Yeah, just squares. something like that. <laughs> they resoundingly agree. <laughs> God, Florian, that desk hates you. Did that sound loud to you guys? Well, I just lightly <laughs> tapped it. <laughs> yeah, bro, it sounded like you went like, like slammed like, it, mashed it. <laughs> Sound like my friend when it's Call of Duty. Or I look, I it just sounded like a down. slam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go back, give the key. Yeah, you give the key back to Magnus. It was you, uh, good day, the less I can do anything else for you, brother. No, but I'll give you your key back. Yes. Thank you. And, uh, come closer. Uh, I think one of my compatriots uh, fucked around with your silverware. I tried to stop him, but but he's quite big, you see. So, um, but I, I did lie to him and tell him that every single vase he tried to stole was full of our ancestors' ashes, so I kept him up agent. So you, he leaned in to listen to what you're telling him, whispering in his ear, and he just kind of froze. And you see his gaze glazes over uh, when you mention the disorder he caused. And he, I don't think you don't think he caught anything else said past that, as he remains frozen in place, just like Tom's with face, with a th thousand y yards there. My spoons. But but I. Uh... <laughs> But I, but I, but I did also organize in the room. You, you could probably rent it out to a small mop box or something now. My spoons. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. I could do. I did all I could. You know how much I love the spoons. I know. I told. I cried <laughs> in agony. I bent my knee to him, brother. We can see you, RPing outside of the game. Talking to like, <laughs> what is he doing? He's talking to his family. Oh, he's just looking. Going. I mean, that's normal. Tom does go. <laughs> <laughs> My I'm sure oh, when <laughs> I'm sure in a family of six, people bug you every now and again. <laughs> Not even knock. Doesn't even knock. So whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Point to Nevitz if he looks at me. Oh, he's staring. <laughs> My spoons. <laughs> you didn't even say back. anything. You just mouth spoons. You broke him. Do I? Do I see my brother's <laughs> coin coin purse on him? I'm not getting involved in this nonsense. You can <laughs> certainly try. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna like 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 cup it like a like a like a sack of water. Sack. See if he notices because he's just staring at Chungo. You feel how big his sack is. Without yes. living his gaze off Chungo, his hand talons around you, and he's like, no, <laughs> and you just keep staring at Chungo. Oh, uh, good brother. I thought you, uh, you, you died there for a moment. Nice I'm glad to know. <laughs> okay, we're going to go now. Um, I, I didn't dare try to clean. He turns to one up. of his soldiers, like, Bushman, take over. I need, I need a day off. Need a day off, <laughs> and he just, with keys in hand, he just maneuvers up to the bow bows. <laughs> Bushman the guard takes over, and he's just like, "Hi, Bushman." Yeah. How old are you? How big his sack is? I'm sixteen. You're sixteen. Oh Yee. God. Um. Yee. You know, you know, Magnus is my brother, so. That's cool. He's a yeah, cool guy. He likes, He's a really cool guy. Yeah, yeah, he likes spoons. Does he? 
Yeah, you should you should go buy him the most expensive spoon you can get your hands. Right now? We love it. Yeah, right now. Right now. Okay. Right. Turns yeah. and goes toward the market. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody out of post anymore. Oh no! Uh, I'd like to look inside the little post office. At the post. What do they got? Post office. Like like the like uh, the, the, guard post, yeah. Yeah, it, the guard post. Yeah. Yeah, the guard post. It. I mean, it's it's more a stairway up to the watch where they look around during the night. Um, there's not like a guard house per se. It's, it's mm -hmm. just stairs up to either side and where the Ooh. there's a mechanism for like, the gates that goes up and down. I'm gonna make one of the, I'm gonna make like the third step up, wiggly. Like when you step on it, you're gonna like in the ball. I'm gonna kill somebody, but okay. <laughs> Can I go? Is there a chair up top? Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna make it so that one leg is always just a little bit shorter. You take your knife, dagger, or whatever, you chip at it with your club, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Scrape at it long enough until, like, eventually it's just, like, just ain't right. <laughs> just ain't right. <laughs> Why are we doing this? Mag, this is gonna come back. I used twitching, go out and take a sit down, like, ah. <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, falls down the stairs, goes to go back up some, hits my step. Falls again. Sure, you know what? Oh. It's in my notes now. I'm sure, that won't have like <laughs> oh, butterfly butterfly him. effect consequence later. I just want to annoy him. <laughs> I just want to mildly inconvenience this person. Okay, uh, I have I no mischief at the guard post. Uh, while these guys are doing whatever shit Anakin's they're up to, I go and find a lower tier uh, Balaxith to buy myself just some regular greaves, because I'm sure they'll be much more better priced. <laughs> sure, uh, you find some... It looks like a second-hand store, hand-me-down, lightly used armor kind of store. Um, perhaps some family heirlooms, perhaps there have been stolen off somebody you don't ask questions I guess uh, they are offered uh, if you're just looking for like metal greaves come pretty cheap what leather just... ones leather ones yeah wouldn't be greaves would they unless I'm wrong but okay. uh, uh, greaves. they go Gre they go on greaves. your forearms <laughs> is but leather going to be more uh, fire resistant than... can... well just because naturally Greaves are uh, aren't greaves boots. Greaves are shins. Are going to be more like, fire yeah, rather. Than... Are you talking about like, like bracers? Yeah, uh, bracers. Like bracers. They go on your forearm. Go on your forearms. Right. Yeah, bracers. Bracers then. Sorry. Leather bracers go for like ten gold pieces. They, they're. They provide some protection, minimal at best. They can. They, they come studded as well for four or five gold pieces. That provide a little bit more armor, but uh, what are you wearing right now? Actually, I'm wondering in comparison on your character sheet. I, think on the... I just have people who don't put armor on the top of their inventory. Uh, I think you're the one who put in all armor, which because which was just all my base armor. So let's see what do I got. I think I just have basic leather armor. Yeah, just has leather armor. Yeah. So that, that would include just I don't know what that the, the best they can do is probably stud it a little bit to give you like another point of armor class for a measly forty five gold pieces. They'll they'll stud it. Not really what I wanted it for though. Fire resistance, maintain stealth. It's not magical. It's pretty mundane. Well, I want it. Uh. I'm lost. I'll have to get someone to be afterwards, just try to figure out what it is that I don't go about We can say you went now, and in retrospect, <laughs> if you had to go for it, you bought it. But uh, unless you can explain to me what it is you're looking for. What I'm seeing right now, you have leather armor on, which is an AC of 11 plus your whatever it is your dexterity modifier, bringing your AC to 13. Leather armor, you know, it's a breastplate, shoulder on protect protections, basic leather armor. An upgrade okay. on top of that would be like studying it with a little bit of metal. Okay. Whole thing, but I suppose that's because that they don't they don't uh, deviate the different pieces. I'm assuming, right? 
I mean, it, there's no point of, of, of me doing that from a statistics point of view, but for flavor, I can say they did. Yeah. It's not gonna... If you're doing this for the sake of armor class, or are you doing this for the sake of flavor? Probably flavor. I just wanna I just wanna have it that now that my my whip is a fire whip. Uh, it doesn't harm me, you know that, um, right? That I You do realize that in the description I said really? that fire does not harm you, yes. Oh okay. Never mind then. Cool. Anybody else? Nope, While <coughs> Chango and Pavor doing their thing, I start tugging Rolo, um, I'm tugging Rolo's arm and say, like, I wanna, I wanna go to bed. Can we go back to the inn? <laughs> yeah. I also gotta go to bed soon, I am. Oh. So it's nine. gonna be a oh, shopping and... session? <laughs> Yeah. I was gonna say, hey, go to bed earlier than my dad. Like, well, I mean, I get up at 4 a.m. So. And then I got school tomorrow too. I mean, oh, I mean I'm I down guess. for whatever. Do you, oh. Do you guys want to call it a session? That's probably go to bed and call it a session. I'm sorry, Tom. I'll, I'll, we'll do better. It's fine. I fucked no, all the time. Face. It's everything I wanted. It's fine. Hey, listen, man. We shaved off session. some legs on a chair. Right. I made up my own backstory. Yeah, we messed around with some silverware on an OCD. Yeah. We went and bathed. We'll start We'll start we next session the with a council meeting. There. Problem solved. No, we start the next session waking up. In the council meeting, because they had that the council meeting. <laughs> because it dragged you from your bed. <laughs> oh, you, you partied... You partied all night, got drunk, and in the next morning, oh my god, in we wake up chambering. in the council chambers no, before no, they walk you in. Now you're there. I will probably be very late to the next session because I have a meeting to uh, at, at five next Monday, and I don't know how old long it's we'll gonna be it exactly out. so i might be in the session at around seven it could be closer to eight or i might just skip it all together but i will not be there at least for the beginning for next okay. week okay i had fun i'm not disappointed i'm just like i'm just looking at my notes and like we made a third way through what i had planned for one session because i don't want to shop here Slow. i want to shop there i'm like okay you gave us weird names man I'm gonna be honest. I, I've 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 seen I've seen parties take three sessions to do shopping, between like all of its characters. According they do to the a lot module, our... it, from the moment you arrive in Alderheart to the moment you arrive at the top canopy is one paragraph. Oh, I mean, okay, that's that's on you. You made you made all these shops for us. Sure did, because I want to live in another city. <laughs> yeah. We're appreciating your hard work, Tom. Three sessions later, I'm like, maybe I should have not done it. I should have just stacked one paragraph. Maybe it's we'd have be some like, um, plot going. It's gonna be like we spent a fucking month in, um... Me fucking sitting here halfway through the week, gotta make fish, people! Fucking... Yeah. <laughs> it's Lovecraft coming at you, those fish, people! Oh, before we go, before we go, through... Before we go, but with regards to my character, did we managed to see anything through the different tiers along the ways of like institutions or whatnot that so are poor yeah poor uh, yeah <laughs> so there is an amaranthine who is all about sense of community and inclusion and taking care of young children and the elderly alike uh called the garden mother uh this institution um found in the midway tier of the trunk does take in some um misplaced folk gives them food uh, feeds them provides them beds it's a uh, it's a common house it's not the splendor of living but it's it's pretty bare bones and it does help the refugee crisis a little bit better than leaving 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 
living on the streets. Uh, it, that's cool. along the lines of like or, or a religious organization. Anything else that you want to find, hit me up in our P chat, and I will help you out with that search there. Um, Can we say that while they go to the council tomorrow, um, that, that I go and check out this institution, and that's uh, I will say this: tomorrow, if you so guys make it to that point, whatnot. I'll say this: if you guys make it to that point where you. Lift till tomorrow? Yeah, sure you can do that. I... Shungle's gonna remind you guys, we have a meeting at midnight with someone. We do? Wait, what? Oh, fuck, fuck, yeah, shit, we do. <laughs> Wait, what? Who? Do we wanna um... do that today, then? <laughs> oh, no, that'll that'll take, like, two hours, Trent, probably. What, Trent, what are you on about? The Dude, letter I got this morning. Yeah, the, the letter. Remember? Remember the, the letter Trent got? Oh, yeah. Thing, I but also that yeah, doesn't right. exist. Oh, totally, the letter, right. With the raccoon tooth in it? Yeah, <laughs> I remember. Tom's like, I spent all week prepping frog people at the spa and didn't remember the last hook at the last session. No, totally. I remember the very important bit that definitely lasted a long time and has so much relevance. Fuck me. <laughs> well, we idiot. In his defense, we also never got to midnight, so maybe if we got closer to midnight, he, he, he would have run up. Maybe if, he said we only got a few way now. through. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's that's the thing. I can't fast forward things because shit happens. I'm okay. assuming it's like late afternoon now, I'm guessing. Or is it evening? Just past noon, yeah. I don't know. You guys have a, a day for yourselves. I wanted to guys, give you guys a day to do whatever you want. If you're not sure what to do, and I explained this to Rolo before, is over here in Xanthor's Guide. I have a very handy list of things characters can do on their downtime. Anything from gambling to pit fighting to magical item hunting, but you guys don't have money, to crafting, to anything that comes to mind you guys that you want to do on your downtime. Gambling is one way to make money for you. There's research, there's religious services, there's. Um, mm -hmm. You're making scrolls if you're a wizard and weird like that. There's training, um, right? There's seeking work for the day. I have stuff to do. Otherwise, we're gonna fast forward to like you guys go to bed and it's next day. I'm just giving you guys a day to do whatever you want because you don't have any money. Yeah. Can you send me the list so that way I can come up with something of what my character is doing? Sure. Um, while these guys are doing whatever. Chungo's can you send me that? Now look through it. Mm -hmm. Like, Chongo's taking his time to like, hey, open just, up. Wait, which book? This book. Uh, book of Druidcraft. Every, <clears throat> every day, every few few hours that Chungo spends reading this book, I'm actually giving Trent content. And that actually leads somewhere. That's cool. Pretty yeah. much, you guys shape the story just as much as I do. You just tell me what you guys want to do with your character, and I'll provide. The universe provides. I I have a question. Yes. So, I got the item, the telescope-looking object, um, the sonic chat from mm -hmm. earlier in the session. Is it like special? Or is it just a regular telescope? It is very special, and if you spend an hour or two into it, which I assume this world does, either during the bathhouse scene or sometime during the day, here you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A little, a little thank you from you know who. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when it comes to like training and whatnot, how long does it take? Like, for example, like if I wanted to go and do some training with my whip, how long would it take before I became proficient in it? Proficient, it takes weeks of training. Um, just as realism is, that's usually long downtime, not so much as a day. Um, you pay a trainer to train you for a few weeks and then you can add your proficiency bonus to your rules, which is like a plus three bonus, which is crazy. Um, and just gets better as you level up. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's two. What? It's whatever your proficiency bonus is. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, level two. I forget that we're not I think I'll it's two. Yeah. Either way, proficiency is, is insane and it's good. Um... Specifically, I can look it up real quick. Tools, training. I just had it. Where did I close it? That was that was dumb. 
That's cool. The telescope. I just read it. Is this in the? Is this? Is this in like uh, the Humblewood book or is this it's the It's in the book? player's handbook, but I'm using Xanthar's because it expands on it. There it is. Uh, training. So specifically, it expands on it and makes it more affordable too because the PHP makes it hell expensive. Uh, training. Given enough free time and service, services of an instructor, uh, a character can learn a language or pick up proficiencies with a tool. Uh, receiving training in a language or tool typically takes at least 10 uh, work weeks, but this time is reduced by the number of work weeks equal to the character's intelligence modifier or penalty if you have a map minus. Training costs about 25 gold pieces per work week. So let's say if I want to become proficient with, with a whip, 10 minus my intelligence modifier, 25 gold pieces per every week. I roll a few complications here and there depending on the number of weeks you spend. Thought happens, uh, and within a few rules, you make it happen. Um, I will say that there will be opportunities for long, like really long, like weeks upon weeks of rest in this campaign. Just not now, because things are going on. Complications will arise while the training typically involves uh, the teacher every 10 work weeks. Spent in training brings 10% chance of complications. That's like my, more like my side of things. But yeah. I really, really love to see the, the see with the option bar. Cause that not only just for while I'm away, I can say I was doing something, uh, but also just in general for future. Just working my way in reverse of a bit of order here. Uh, wages. Uh, for work. When all else fails, an adventure can turn to an honest trade to earn a living. Yada yada. Uh, training, work, selling magical items, scribing a spell scroll, research into like anything you want to find out. Religious services, <laughs> relaxation, pit fighting, gambling, uh, crime. Cause that turned out so well for more class session last campaign magic item yeah. crafting uh carousing buying magic items and others also you can come up with your own stuff and i'll figure out how to roll it the day is yours Anyway, probably tell by the fact that I was working while doing this session this this week. And it's just going to be hell. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I mean, worst case scenario, if we can't make it, I'll probably skip session. We'll see. But we'll figure it out closer to the date. Uh, until then, thank you for hanging out. I'll be uh, still here if anybody wants to hang post session. I think Trent just messaged me telling me he's gonna go. Yep. Sounds like Trent's gonna go to sleep. Down work. Oh, I gotta go to bed. Yeah. Goodbye, friends. I'm just reading the well, book. Thanks Goodbye. For thanks for joining me. See you. I'll, thanks, I'll be everybody. here. I'm just gonna stop the recording now.